Orange Zone. Today we're doing a deep dive on folate, also known as vitamin B9, and sometimes referred to as folic acid. Now, to clarify, folic acid is a synthetic version of folate, and I don't recommend it. Now, there's another type of synthetic version that's commonly used. It's called folinic acid. Both of these forms, again, synthetic. Where do we find them? Predominantly, we find them in cheap supplements, and we find them in fortified foods. Unfortunately, in its grand wisdom, the U.S. government has decided to add this to or to use this to fortify processed foods that aren't good for people. And so they add a synthetic vitamin that's also really not good, and there are problems with it um, to those fortified foods in an, in an attempt to make them more nutritious. So if you've ever looked at the package of a box of bread or crackers or other types of grain-based, especially foods like pastas, etc., you're always going to see folic acid listed in the ingredients because it's illegal to sell these processed foods if they don't fortify them with folic acid. Now, a lot of doctors try to use those terms syner synergistically or interchangeably, but folic acid is not the same thing as folate, and we're going to talk about why here in just a minute. Now, what are the key roles of folate? A lot of this is heavy. We're going to get into kind of simplifying it, but one of the major roles of folate is in the ability to synthesize DNA and protein. So this is important because this is necessary for growth, especially with pregnant women, children, but also it's important for maintenance and repair of the body, right? If you can't synthesize protein and DNA effectively, how are you going to repair damaged tissues and damaged cells? So very important in that regard. We also know that folate helps to repair DNA. It helps with a process called methylation, which we'll get into here in just a minute, as well as the conversion of homocysteine into methionine, which we'll also talk about again, very deep. And then it converts into a substance called SAMI, s methionine, also we'll talk about, and it lowers homocysteine, and it aids in red blood cell production. So deficiencies of folate are a common contributing factor in anemias of, you know, we say non-iron deficiency anemias, because a lot of people think of anemia and they think iron deficiency, but folate can actually, deficiency can cause different types of anemia, which we'll talk about. So these are key roles of folate. Now let's go through and we'll simplify these roles in context for you as it relates to symptoms, as it relates to disease, because that's important as far as I'm concerned for you to be able to take this home and understand it. So folate deficiency is linked with several types of health conditions, one being infertility. So ladies, if you have had a hard time with fertility and, and it's not your husband, maybe, maybe you've both been tested and his sperm are fine and his morphology of his sperm and strength of his sperm are okay and you're still not capable of conceiving, infertility is linked to folate deficiency largely because its role in DNA production and repair. Um, it also plays an important role in fertility in estrogen metabolism, which we'll talk about shortly. But um, folate, very, very important. So if you are struggling with fertility issues, you might ask your doctor to measure your folate levels and determine whether or not that's playing a role. Folate deficiency can also contribute to different types of cancer. We've seen linkages to breast cancer and to colon cancer, to name a few, as well as heart disease. There is, earlier I was talking about a chemical called homocysteine, and this homocysteine causes vascular damage. If we look at what homocysteine does to the blood vessels itself, and this is actually an important conversation in context with people and doctors recommending statin drugs because commonly, uh, in my opinion, the misconception that heart disease is largely linked to cholesterol problems is um, is, is construed and, and really not very accurate. But this is what we're doing here is we're just drawing an image. This is a blood vessel. And so imagine blood flowing in this direction. And so what a lot of times will happen is 
the person will develop a plaque on the interior aspect of the wall of that blood vessel. So that plaque will build up and then um, create blood turbulence and disruption. And so if that plaque is dislodged, which it sometimes can, this plaque material will continue to flow down. And when this blood vessel branches off into smaller branches, you know, now you have the potential of, of, of a plaque like this creating a lodge and stopping blood flow to a tissue leading to a cardiovascular pathology. How does this happen? Why does, why does a plaque like this form? Predominantly, it's going to form not because of cholesterol. So the common myth is that cholesterol will cause this and that because these plaques are made of cholesterol. Interestingly enough, now they're finding microplastics in these plaques as well, if you haven't seen that new research. But plaques form as a result of vascular damage. So imagine you have this inflammation that is occurring to the lining of the blood vessel. Okay, that vascular damage. And it's the damage that attracts cholesterol. If you didn't have the damage, the cholesterol wouldn't be attracted and you wouldn't form the plaque. So the question is, what causes the damage? Well, one of the things that causes this damage is a chemical called homocysteine. So when we're talking about the relationship of folate deficiency to heart disease and the cardiovascular complications, this is where it comes in. Homocysteine, it builds up in the bloodstream and part of the way we get rid of homocysteine or metabolize homocysteine is through folate. Now we also know pregnancy complications can arise as a result of folate deficiency as well. And you know, similar to the infertility issue, part of it has to do with the ability to produce DNA and to make proteins. We know that birth defects, specifically what are called NTD, that stands for neural tube defects. So if you've ever heard of spina bifida, and this is a type or one of the main types of a neural tube defect. We've also, we also see things like cleft palate and tongue ties can, can be uh, problematic in some cases, but, but these are the main two, cleft palate and spina bifida as a birth defect caused by folate deficiency. As a matter of fact, this is one of the reasons why folate was originally being researched. They were trying to figure out how these issues were caused, and some really great scientists uh, identified folate deficit as one of the triggers. We know that malabsorption of folate is problematic in inflammatory bowel diseases like celiac, Crohn's, and ulcerative colitis, and there's, there's kind of a link between the inflammation in the gut contributing to damage to the gut, leading to malabsorption of folates. And then once the malabsorption kicks in, the folate deficiency caused by the gut damage can make it hard to repair from the inflammatory bowel. Remember, your gut turns over your gut cells. So if we just kind of, let's change our colors here. So this is the stomach and the esophagus and the small intestine and then further down the large intestine. The lining, the coating, if you will, that lines the cells that line the tissues of the small intestine, large intestine, stomach, esophagus, etc. These cells have a very rapid turnover, meaning they are constantly try, having to replicate new cells in order to maintain the integrity of the GI tract. So these cells, every two to seven days, are new. This lining is new. And one of the reasons why uh, that's important to understand is what we were talking about earlier is that with inflammatory bowel disease, is this damage happening to the intestinal lining. Once you become folate deficient, and you lack folate to help with this cell turnover, remember, this requires DNA 
production. And so now these cells can't replace themselves when they become damaged, or at least it's not, it's not an all or none. It's their ability to replace themselves is diminished. And so now the gut can start to break down. And so again, if you've already got inflammatory bowel disease and now you're folate deficient, this is why this problem can occur and why it can become uh, even more exacerbated if, uh, if this cycle is there. So um, very important if you have inflammatory bowel disease to recognize you're at risk for folate deficiency and that very folate deficiency might also exacerbate your inflammatory disease. And this is also true because many people with inflammatory bowel disease take medications that can actually deplete folate. So again, it, it's it, it, the kind of irony there is the treatment for the illness reflects a deficit that can make the illness worse over time. And then we also have uh, something called organic brain syndrome, which is also linked to folate deficiency.